Hello guys, today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a crochet frog. He's, as you can see, fit in my palm. He's made with a chunky yarn, super duper cute, perfect for any market that you might have or just a gift to friend and family also works as well. For the materials, I also sell the frog crochet kit which comes with everything you need for this tutorial in order to make the frog. As you can see, here's the box. So the kit also comes with the pattern card where inside this there would be the written pattern of the frog as well as the list of material that comes with the kit. So you'll need a 6.5 mm hook, some pins so that you can uh, secure the parts before sewing, yarn needle to sew parts together, stitch markers, stuffing, couple of different color yarn. So two of the super bulky yarn or size 6 yarn in light green and pink color as well as uh, black color yarn but this one will be acrylic medium size yarn or size 4 yarn. So inside this case you can see the green color yarn, the pink one, the stuffing in the back as well as the stitch marker, needle, uh, the pin, the black yarn, as well as the crochet hook. So everything you need is all in here except just the scissors which I'm sure you have one at home. So before we begin, I just want to let you know that I also have a playlist called Amigurumi 101. In that playlist, they have a lot of the slower paced tutorials. So if you need extra help with certain stitches or getting familiar with a certain techniques, I highly recommend you check that out. For the first piece, we're going to make the frog blushes on his cheek and start with the pink yarn. So let's pull out some yarn. And you're going to start by making a new loop. In order to make a loop, you're simply going to cross over the yarn, just like that, looking like a circle. Hold that intersection piece, fold it down, and then grab your hook, insert through the middle under that center piece, hold the other two tail, and then pull to make a loop. Notice how the loop is slightly bigger than my hook. So you're going to hold on the short end and then pull the long end to reduce the size of the loop. Now you have just made your first loop. You are going to make two chains by putting the yarn over your hook and then pull through. That is one chain. Repeat one more time, put the yarn over the hook, and then pull through. You can see that there's one, two, so two chains in total. This super bulky yarn is slightly harder to see with, but I encourage you to like try to fill it with your hand. Uh, the more you crochet with this type of yarn, the sooner you'll become more familiarized with you know being able to tell where the stitches are okay next step is to make a single crochet into this first stitch so this is first stitch second stitch you know first chain second chain how you call it so i'm gonna push my hook into that first chain and then put the yarn over hook and then you pull through after that, you're going to have two loops. So yarn over hook again, and then pull through both loops. 
Now you just made a single crochet. We need to make five more single crochet. So I'm gonna push my hook back into the loop here. It's kind of hard to see, but you'll see that there's a hole in there. So I'm gonna insert that in. It should be the same chain that you're inserting your hook into. So same thing, yarn over hook, pull through. Yarn over hook, pull through both loops. This is the first one you made. This is the second single crochet you make. So four more times. So push your hook into the middle hole. Yarn over hook, pull through. Yarn over hook, pull through both loops. That is your third single crochet. Okay, keep going. Yarn over hook, pull through. Yarn over hook, pull through both loops. That's the fourth single crochet. Insert the hook into the middle. Yarn over hook, pull through. Yarn over hook, pull through both loops. That's the fifth single crochet. So push your hook into the middle. Yarn over hook, pull through. Yarn over hook, pull through both loops. That's the sixth single crochet. So once you make six single crochet into that first chain, you'll see that it started to form a circle. And now we're at the end of our first round. At the end of every round, I encourage you to count your stitches to make sure they are correct, as well as insert the stitch marker at the final stitch of the round. So this one, which is my sixth single crochet so that I remember where my round start and end. So looking up close, you can see that this is my first single crochet. So I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, and then six. So you should have a total of six stitches in your first round. Okay, let's begin the second round. For the second round, we're going to increase six times. So in every single stitch that we have here, and increase in my definition is basically make two single crochet into each stitch. Everyone else's pattern might have different definition for what an increase is, but I encourage you to always check the pattern, how uh, it is written. Like for example, here increases, you know, INC in my pattern and it will say to use the single crochet. So we're going to do that in our case. So insert the hook into the first stitch. Make sure to push your hook under both of the loop because each stitch kind of consists of two loop where you have front loop here, front loop and then back loop. And then yarn over hook, pull through, yarn over hook, pull through both loops to make a single crochet. So you already have one single crochet in the first stitch. You need to push your hook into the same stitch and then make another single crochet. I know it's slightly hard to see from this angle, but there is two single crochet in the first stitch. You can also kind of look from the side. It's easier to tell that, okay, that's the first stitch you make, second stitch you just made in round two. Okay, we need to repeat that step five more times. So insert your hook into the second stitch of round one and then make two single crochet, which is equivalent to an increase in this pattern. 
so the shear increase now on the third stitch there's one single crochet that is second single crochet so that's an increase okay in the fourth stitch an increase on the fifth stitch one two this an increase and then on the last stitch just simply pull out the stitch marker and then make an increase one two okay so now we are done with the second round you should have a total of 12 stitches so I'm gonna count this is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and then twelve okay so that is good i'm not gonna put back the stitch marker because we're almost done so for this pattern we're gonna make one extra single crochet in the next stitch And then we're just gonna finish off by that I simply meant I'm going to pull out some more tail and then cut the yarn just make sure you have long enough tail so that you can sew this blush to the frog and then in the back this is you know the tail from where we started off you can just cut that middle tail shorter if you want so here we're done with one blush just make another one exactly the same as this next up we're going to make the frog eyes with the light green yarn so let Pull out some yarn, set it aside, and kind of the same thing. We're going to make a new loop. Then you will chain two times. One, two. And then you will make six single crochet into the first chain. So push your hook and then make single crochet. That's one single crochet. Two. Three. end of the first round again you should have six stitches in total so one two three four five six and then just don't forget to mark the end of your round with a stitch marker
for the next round, you're going to follow a sequence by making two single crochet, one in each stitch, followed by an increase. So to do that, in the first stitch, make one single crochet. In the next stitch, make another single crochet. And then in the stitch after, make an increase. So that's an increase. So I can show you again. This is single crochet, single crochet, and then an increase. So repeat that one more time. On the fourth stitch, let's say single crochet, single crochet, and then on the fifth stitch, Make a single crochet. And then on the last stitch, just pull out the stitch marker and make an increase. One, two. So that's an increase. And then mark the end of the round. Alright, so you'll notice that as you are making the second round, the piece will start to curve, which is normal. That's what it should look like. And once you're done, don't forget to count uh, the number of stitches you have in this round. You should have a total of 8 stitches. So I'm going to start counting, but before I do that, I will cut off this tail in the middle. We don't really need that. Okay, so this is the first stitch of the round. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then last stitch, eight. Okay, for the third round, we're going to make a couple of new stitches tight. So I'm gonna try to show you one by one slowly. However, if you need more help, don't forget to check out my Omikurumi 101 tutorial playlist. There are slower tutorial there so you can learn each technique step by step. Okay. So for the next stitch, we're going to start off by making a half double crochet. To do that, first you will put the yarn over the hook and then insert your hook into the first stitch. After that, yarn over hook again and then you will pull through. You see how we have three loops here. You're gonna yarn over hook again and then pull through all three loops. This is the half double crochet. Next, make one double crochet, yarn over hook, insert into the stitch, yarn over hook, pull through. Similar to the half double crochet, with you have three loops here but for double crochet you're gonna yarn over hook and then pull through only the first two loops here so one two and then you will have the remaining two loops so you're gonna yarn over hook again and then pull through both loops this is a double crochet you can also see that double crochet is a bit taller than half double crochet The next stitch, we're gonna repeat the half double crochet. So yarn over hook and then insert, oop, insert to a stitch, yarn over hook and then pull through three loops here. 
yarn over hook and then pull through all three loops. Next stitch is just gonna be a single crochet, so just insert your hook, yarn over hook, pull through, yarn over hook, pull through, pull up loops. The last four stitches, one, two, three, four, we're just gonna skip for this round. So we are basically done with round three. Simply gonna finish off by cutting a long tail. And then just pull it up. And then also remove the stitch marker as well. So you'll see that um, this side where you make the double crochet would be kind of the tallest. So the piece will look slightly tilted which is fine because this will be the eye piece that will go on the frog. That's what it's supposed to look like. You're going to make this same exact piece uh, just one more so that you'll have both eyes. So here are both eyes. So once you're done with them, kind of set them aside and then grab the black yarn. So I'm just gonna cut this middle piece. Alright, and then grab a needle. Insert it the yarn into the needle, just like that. So we're going to have to decide which one gonna be our left or right eye. So this one will be my left eye and the way you tell is let's first find where that um, double crochet is located at. So I'm gonna this is why we finish off. I'm gonna count back one, two, three, four. These are the stitches we skip. And then this is single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet is here. So we're gonna face the piece. Um, yeah, like, like this. Where double crochet is at. And you kind of see how... Um, it's not like totally smooth. It's slightly tilted on an angle, which is what we want, essentially. And we're going to sew um, black eye on top of this. To do that, you can simply insert the yarn. Just gonna repeat that a couple of times so that the yarn is a bit thicker. I personally really like a metal needle because usually sometimes when I sew I like kind of use a lot of tension on the needle and then if I used like a plastic needle it would break so the metal needle worked much better for me okay so this uh, amount of thickness is good enough and once you're done sewing Okay, just take out the needle and then cut off the tails and simply tie the two tails together to form a knot. 
we can just hide the rest of the tail inside the eye or just cut it off doesn't matter so we got one eye the second eye is gonna be the same essentially essentially but uh, you'll have to rotate the eye to the opposite side so that the I guess the longest side would be on this side instead of the other side so that you know the eye is kind of symmetrical so I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same for the other eye and come back Okay, so next we're going to make the head and also the body. Grab the light green yarn, make a new loop for the first round. Chain two, same thing. And then make six single crochet into the first chain. count your stitches so that if you you know mess up somewhere along the rounds you don't have to undo so so much and if there's incorrect number of stitches in the current round you can fix it right away so always remember to count I'm not gonna count this time but you should have six stitches in total for the first round for the second round we simply going to increase six times so in every single stitch here so in the first stitch oops there's one single crochet in the same stitch there's another single crochet so two single crochet becomes an increase repeat five more times Just the second increase. One, two, that's the third increase. and then pull out the stitch marker for the last one one two this is the last six increase basically and then insert your stitch marker in there So for this round, you should have a total of 12 stitches. I'm not gonna count, but I'm sure you'll know how to count by now. And you might also notice that the piece is starting to curve. If that happens to you, what it means is you crochet a little bit too tight, just like me. So in order to avoid like a pointy, coney head, I highly recommend that you kind of stretching out your piece by just kind of pull it out 
you know at the end of each round you should do this to avoid the coney head or alternatively you can try to loosen your tension a little bit so that it's not so pointy for the third round we're going to follow a sequence by making one single crochet followed by an increase and repeat that six times so i'm gonna show you that in the first stitch make one single crochet okay done in the next stitch make an increase so first one and then two so that's an increase so one single crochet and then an increase and then do the same until you reach the end of the round i'm gonna demonstrate that one more time so one single crochet and then an increase so that's an increase and then there's the one single crochet yeah simply follow the sequence until you reach the end of the round so i'll see you at the end of the round okay now i'm at the end of round three you should have a total of 18 stitches make sure to count that and if your piece is a bit pointy remember to stretch out you know massage stretch out your piece so that they become a bit more flat it still will be slightly curvy but as soon as you stretch it out it would be flatter which is what we want okay so for round four it's gonna be a similar sequence instead of one single crochet increase we're gonna make two single crochet then increase so in the first stitch make one single crochet in the second stitch one single crochet in the third stitch increase so one two so that's an increase again one single crochet one single crochet and then an increase repeat the sequence until you reach the end of the round uh, it should be done uh, only six times so we already did one time so five more times here's the end of round four you should have a total of 24 stitches at the end of this round for round five make three single crochet followed by an increase repeat that for six times so in the first stitch one single crochet in the second stitch oops one single crochet in the third stitch one single crochet in the fourth stitch increase so that's one and then that's two so that's an increase so one single crochet one single crochet oh i counted the wrong one one single crochet one single crochet one single crochet and then increase repeat that for a total of six times already did one so just five more times and then i'll see you at the end of round five here i'm at the end of round five and you should have a total of 30 stitches at this round so make sure to count again and you'll see that the piece will start to curve more and this is natural that's fine as long as it's not like super pointy so make sure to just stretch out your piece for the next two rounds six and seven you're simply going to make single crochet in every stitch of the round and since round five have 30 stitches 
Round 6 will also have 30 stitches. Round 7 will also have 30 stitches since all we are making is single crochet. So for round 6, in another word, you're just gonna make single crochet 30 times, right? In each stitch. Okay, I'm just gonna begin making single crochet. Nothing special, just do this for a total of two rounds and then I'll see you at the end of round seven. Here we're at the end of round seven. As you can see, you should have a total of 30 stitches at the end of this round. For round eight, we're going to make 14 single crochet followed by an increase and repeat that two times. So I'm gonna start one, two, Thirteen, fourteen, and then an increase. One, two. That's an increase. All right. So repeat the same sequence one more time, and then you'll reach the end of this round. At the end of round eight, you should have a total of thirty-two stitches. Make sure to count. For round nine, we simply just gonna make single crochet all the way around. Just like round six and seven, but in round nine, there's gonna be 32 uh, stitches. So it's gonna be 32 single crochet that you'll have to make. So just one single crochet in each stitch around and then I'll see you at the end of round nine. Here we're at the end of round nine. Again you should have a total of 32 stitches in this round. For round 10, we're going to make six single crochet followed by a decrease and repeat that for four times. So one single crochet, there's two single crochet, three single crochet, four single crochet, five single crochet, and then six single crochet. Let me double check. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's great. Next, you're going to decrease. To do that, push your hook into the next stitch, yarn over hook, and then pull through. And then just push your hook to the stitch after that. Yarn over hook, and then pull through. You see how you have three loops? Now you're going to yarn over hook and then pull through all three loops. Whenever I make a decrease stitch, I usually like to pull it a bit tighter so that it's less visible. This one is typically known as a regular way to decrease. Some people like to do invisible decrease. 
you can do that also if that's what you prefer but I typically just stick with a regular decrease because um, it gives me a little bit more visibility so that I can see what kind of stitches are in each round but that's kind of uh, depending on each person preference I think if you make it tight enough it's less visible anyway so it doesn't matter too much I'm gonna repeat the sequence one more time for you so crochet single crochet six times that's one two three And then for the decrease, push your hook into the first stitch, yarn over hook, pull through, you have two loops, insert the hook into the next stitch, yarn over hook, pull through, now you have three loops, yarn over hook and then pull through all the loops, there you got a decrease. Now you're going to repeat that same sequence two more times so you reach the end of this round here we're at the end of round 10 and you should have a total of 28 stitches round 11 is going to be very similar to round 10 except for you're going to make five single crochet then decrease so this is one to repeat that sequence three more times until you reach the end of the round at the end of round 11 you should have a total of 24 stitches and this is also a good place to start adding some stuffing The amount of stuffing you'll put into your piece, well, it's, it's really depend on how you like your plush, whether you want it to be on the softer side or a bit more firm. However, the stuffing that comes with the kit is uh, plenty for the frog. When you stuff, you can just put some using your hand and that's fine. And what I also like to do when I stuff is try to spray the stuffing onto like the the edges or the side of the frog, leaving kind of the middle part a bit hollow or empty. Because I want to make sure that when we stuff, we try to do it, you know, uniformly as possible. So I'll stuff the side first. Personally, I like to stuff firmly off my creation because if I were to wash them in a washing machine, I want to make sure that they still hold its shape and just having a lot of stuffing really helps with that. So 
So right now I've used most of the stuffing that came with the bag. Still have a little bit more. I'm gonna set that aside for now because I wanna do that at the end when we almost done. Okay, so let's continue round 12. For this round, the sequence is going to be one single crochet, then decrease for a total of eight times. That's one single crochet. And that's a decrease. So while you're crocheting in this round, just make sure to um, when you insert your hook, like try not to pick up the stuffing. If the stuffing is too close to the edges, you can use your finger to kind of push it down while you're inserting the hook into the stitch. Yeah, so simply repeat that same pattern, one single crochet, then a decrease until you reach the end of this round. At the end of round 12, you should have a total of 16 stitches. And now for the last round, round 13, all you need to do is decrease all around. So just decrease 8 times until you reach the end of the round. That's one. That's two. Yeah, so I'll see you at the end of this round. At the end of round 13, you should have a total of eight stitches. So now that we're done with the last round, let's finish off with a long tail. Before we close this hole, I want to put in the rest of the stuffing that I prepared. I want this to be as firm as it could be, but you know, not too firm because if you put too much stuffing, you'll see that there will be like a gap that's starting to show, especially if the stitch is too loose. So we don't want that to happen. But just firm, firmly enough that the frog can hold its shape. All right, so I've used the rest of my stuffing. You could also try to, you know, shave the piece by your hand almost like a sculpture you can kind of shape the piece especially if you stuff a lot and it's firm it would sort of you know shape it the way you want okay now we're going to close the hole so just insert the tail into the needle I'm going to close the hole is I'm simply gonna put the needle in to the next stitch and then out to the stitch after and then pull don't need to pull too hard uh, in put the needle in and then out to the next stitch You might be picking up some stuffing and that's fine. Just kind of pull it out and then put it back into the piece. Okay, in and then out. In and then 
out. Just make sure you go all the way around and then you can starting to pull hard so that the hole will close on its own pretty much. Now that the hole is closed, we need to hide all these tails. So I'm just gonna kind of insert the needle randomly to the other spot to secure the hole a little bit. And then insert the needle again to somewhere else. Cut the yarn and then let's hide uh, this in here. I'm using a scissor here, but a um, better thing to use would be uh, you could use your needle too to avoid cutting um, your stitches with your scissor or even a small. I guess chopstick might also work. Okay, so we are done with the hair and body now. So let's try to position both of the eyes on the head and see how it looks like. Oops, okay. Once you have the position, just pin it down with the, the pin. Just take your time to make sure the position is good. I'm also gonna insert another pin, so two pins on each eye so that they are more stable and not gonna like really move when we sew this. Alright. Okay. And then after that we need to make sure that uh we also see where the mouse gonna be at so the mouth should be on row 3 or round 3. This circle right there on top is first round, second round, third round. So the smile will go somewhere in here. Right? And then just based on the look, I think the proportion looks fine to me. So I'm gonna start sewing the eyes to the head first and worry about the smile a little bit later. Simply just insert the tails into the needle just like that. And then the way I like to sew is I usually try to grab um, the yarn piece next to where uh, I need to sew. So just do that and then pull through. Then you're gonna alternate between you know grabbing the piece on the body and also the piece on the eye itself. I'm gonna do that by inserting it from the inside and then going out. It would make your sewing look very clean that way. Okay, now go back to the body and then pick up like a piece of yarn nearby and pull through. Now go back to the eyes. Uh, go to like the next stitch that you haven't insert your needle. So I'm inserting the needle inside out and then pull through, right? I think you kind of get the idea. And now we go back to the body. 
Um, grab a piece of yarn nearby and then pull. Now back to the eye. Insert the needle inside out. And then back to the body. Let's grab a piece of yarn you can find. And just pay attention to where the eyes is facing. Make sure it doesn't rotate or turn as you are sewing. Because it's, it's a lot of work to undo once you already have it sewn for sure. And then once you sew um, a lot of spot already, it's safe to just pull out the needle so that you can sew the rest. Okay. The eye doesn't really need to be stuffed, although you can. Okay, so now that oops, now that we are done, I'm just gonna insert the needle in and then out somewhere. And then just do that one more time before you cut the tail. And see how like the tail is still showing out? You can use the needle to hide it back in all right so one of the eye is sewn now i'm gonna go ahead and sew the other eye okay for the mouth grab the needle and insert the black yarn into the needle for the mouth we're going to sew a smile on this third round you can also put a pin so that you know where it will be you see this circle is the first round second round and then third round but it's gonna be along something like that I'm going to try to mark a spot before I sew so I think something like that yeah simply Grab a needle and insert the, the black yarn into your needle. So I'm gonna insert the needle to the spot that I have already marked. So first one will be that. Then once you already got your yarn there, you can just remove the needle from there.
Okay, so once the smile is done, I'm gonna move the remaining tail to the other side so that they end up at the same spot. I'm gonna cut those and then just tie it into a knot to secure it. And try to hide it inside of the piece. Alright, we got a frog with a big smile. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is to sew the sheep blushes on the frog. position it however you like however I kind of like it a little bit toward the front you can see this like the side I want the sheet slightly to the front then you're going to secure it with the pin Yeah, so in the pattern, uh, what they say is, I want it to be on row 5 to 8, so you'll see there will be one row in between the chic and the smile. Because this is row 4 there, this is 5, 6, 7, 8, that's fine, just an estimate. But just, you know, double shaking to make sure they are symmetrical before you sew them on. To sew it on, just grab your needle and insert the tail into that needle. And the step for sewing is pretty much gonna be the same as how you sew the, the eyes. Just gonna grab a piece nearby on the body and then pull through. And then you're gonna switch between the body of the frog and the blush by grabbing the next stitch of the blush and then go instead of inside out it would be like bottom up if we go down this way just insert your uh, needle into the next stitch so downward and then grab your piece your piece on the body and then go back up through the same stitch and go down through the next stitch grab a piece on the frog and just pull through now up through the same stitch down through the next stitch Grab a piece on the frog up through the same stitch down through the next stitch find a piece on the frog that you can grab through the same stitch down through the next stitch
and then find a piece of frog you can grab and then up through the same stitch down through the next stitch and find a piece you can grab okay we're almost there up through the same oops up through the same stitch down through the next stitch grab a piece of frog now up through the same stitch down to the next stitch grab a piece of green then up to the same stitch down to the next stitch grab a piece of green somewhere stitch and then that's where we started sewing so I'm just gonna keep pushing the needle to some way random all right can we move the pin now and I'm gonna hide the tail somewhere down here As you can see, is pretty pretty neat. You can really see where like the sewing point or, or where the sewing stitches are made, but it's basically on top along the edges of the circle. Simply repeat the same method of sewing on the other sheet.